everyone. This is Liana, and I'm here with Il Peach. Hello. Hello. Thank you guys for joining us today.、Um, before we get into the meat and potatoes of what's going on, how did you guys come up with the name Il Peach, Baby Peach, Little Peach, Bad Peach? Jess. Bad Peach. <laughs> It's not very interesting, but we basically just put together a bunch of words, and we thought that that sounded sick. Yeah. And, and a lot of people didn't like it, but. It felt appropriate. Sometimes one of us is really in a nasty mood. <laughs> one of us is sweet. We、yeah. trade roles. We often. asked. We asked、yeah. our friends. We t- we took a list of words, brought it to our friends, and the one that they said no, this is like definitely don't do don't that do、one. this name. That's we were like, like this is right. <laughs> well, because it's like you kind of sometimes just want to go with how you're feeling, and if people don't like it, that's okay. But also, like I think a lot of people relate to that. Even though it's like two words together, I think like peaches are so sweet. But sometimes it's like you're feeling sweet, but also like you don't want to be sweet all the time. Yes.、Yeah. So I get it. We're very polar opposites, also.、Oh. So a lot of people that collaborate with us are always like noticing that. So it just felt appropriate too. I like that. Yeah. And you guys, I know. Did you guys meet in high school? I think we did. Okay. So you met in high school. I read that you guys were. Kind of a little like you did the acapella, like kind of <laughs> geeked out a bit and stuff. We、yeah. were huge nerds. Okay, like theater, acapella, jazz group.、Nerds. The best musicians are, I feel like. Yeah. Oh、uh, yeah, big musical guy. Okay,、yeah. so you guys did like musical theater. You did all the shows. Everything. Yes. Yeah, I I grew up、okay. in a a musical household. Yeah. So my parents, brother、mm-hmm. and sister. Yeah. Did you what? Did what was your favorite show that you did? Musical. Probably Oklahoma or Sound of Music. Oh, those are yeah. Good yeah. My my dad was a musical director at a theater, so、oh, I kind of grew up doing shows at、yeah. this theater. Yeah, and it's yeah. like kind of fun when you grow up in that environment, and then you can translate that into a different genre, your own creative process.、Mm-hmm. What was your favorite show doing musical wise?、Oh I mean, my career only extended to the end of high school, <laughs> <laughs> not into college or anything so, like that. Yeah, probably the Sound of Music, though. Oh, okay. I mean, so you both, did that show together? We both did that show together.、Aww. But I feel like I was more like choir girl, like yeah, acapella, yeah. jazz. You were more like Glee. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> totally.、Yeah. I love show choir. I love、yes. hearing about artists like background, like that kind of geeky、mm-hmm. stuff. Because most artists are, you know, pretty cool. Like you know, have a cool like vibe and everything. So when you hear that someone's done something kind of geekier, like in the past, it's always kind of fun to know that background. Yes. And with you guys knowing each other for so long, you know, a long time, how has that kind of helped your process with making music? Do you write together? Do you create everything together, or do you guys kind of split up? The work in terms of like you write, you do the music. Like, how do you guys do that? It used to be more fifty-fifty, but now we kind of like both dabble in each other's roles. Like、oh, nice. he he does the majority of the music. I'll、mm-hmm. co-produce on things. I do the majority of the writing and singing. Now he has started focusing on that part too. But I love that. Yeah, it helps with the history because we can be really blunt <laughs> and just like that is shit. I、no. hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Yeah. Or that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. there's it's no... a lot of throwing spaghetti at the wall. Yep, just walk in the room. And I feel like generally that's what happens、yeah. in life. You just have to keep, like keep trying things and then see if they actually work or not. Yeah, but it's nice you guys can be honest with each other and be able to be like, yeah, I don't like that, not loving it. Some people, I think, I don't know. It seems like some bands definitely have a little bit of a hierarchy where it's like. This person is kind of the main, like making the choices, making the you know the rules, and it's nice、yeah. that you guys. It seems like you have a very equal relationship with writing. Yeah, there's there's no. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I was like, that's probably the one point where we could like butt heads sometimes. Oh. Because is, we're is al- what we're、uh? al- we're always trying to be <laughs> <Yeah> equal. <laughs> Very、yeah. Libra of you.、Yes. I, I found out that well, you're a Libra. You're going to say Sagittarius. Yeah, Sagittarius of me. I was going to bring the astrology in later, but I couldn't help it. I、oh, mean, let's go there. L- let's do it. No, no Libras are all about balance. Yes, you're、okay. trying to keep the harmony.、Exactly. I like chaos. You know, <laughs> Sagittarius do like chaos. Do they? They do. And、oh. sometimes Sagittarius, I do feel like they know so much. So I do feel like sometimes Sagittarius. 
and other signs can like be like, yeah, I think this is the way we should do it. And Libras are like, yeah, like I want harmony. So that's interesting. It's very fitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess that's why this is working out. <laughs> He's like, I guess, I mean, you know. Yeah. But no, but it does seem like you guys have a really good balance of everything and you work really well together. And I really heard that. So I've been listening nonstop to Bloom, which is very fitting. It came out today. That's right. And that's really exciting that you guys are here on the day that it's premiering. And I have to say, I just, I don't know. I kept repeating it in my car. It was one of those songs, I'm not just saying to butter you guys up. It was one of those songs that I just kept playing. At first I listened to it, I was like, okay. And then I just kept listening and would turn up, you know, especially when oh, you're yeah. like really getting into it. And it was cool because I read that you are really inspired by Karen O and the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. And it, you sounded, I mean, it was really similar to Karen O, especially that beginning part of the song. Sick. And I was like, this is <laughs> really good. So. Was how much was the yeah yeah yeahs and Karen O an inspiration not only for this song but just in general for your music and what other bands do you guys feel like are influences too? It's funny because I think that I've always gotten the Karen O reference with my voice like yeah. for years. So obviously I love her and I yeah. love the yeah yeah yeahs. We I think it's nice between us because. That would be, I would say, one of my favorite bands, but we really have tried to like also be like a hybrid of other music too. Of yeah. Like it's like a nod to that, but I don't want to lean into it too far because yeah. I always get that reference. Yeah. You know? You don't want to go like too much, but also like right. embrace like just the natural quality. But I think there are yeah. certain elements like I think how musically, sonically, and like lyrically she writes, it's it can be very simplistic in its nature, but very powerful. Yeah. So it definitely like those are the thing, the takeaways for for writing the songs more than being like I'm gonna, you know, yeah, try to like, match that totally. sonic palette. And yeah, I, you know. it's it, it's yeah. a, it's a delicate balance how much influence you you can let in, you yeah. know, like the things you listen to, the things you see and watch out of just enjoyment and love. Yeah. That's what is going to shape you, you know, and, and your taste. But then there's also this other side where if, if you kind of close the door on that, it r leaves room for more imagination. Yeah, you don't want to so, go like too far. Yeah. But you also want to allow yourself to be inspired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really loved what you were saying, not to get on the whole Karen O thing, but her music is really amazing because it can be very simplistic, but also very like so many different elements. Yep. And that's what I really love about your music too. Thank is you. that like I heard the song Gum, which obviously came out like a couple years ago. And that to me seemed a little bit more of I don't know, there was like a rawness and like kind of a, some, I don't know, not simplistic in a bad way, but like a sweet simplicity mm -hmm. that I really connected with. Mm. Whereas, I don't know, some of the other songs were a little bit more like there was more going on. There's a little bit more grit or other elements to it. So I really like, I don't know, I, I really like the combination you guys have Thank with you. all that. So it's really cool that you guys do that. And it's exciting. So so Bloom is coming out, and then obviously you're going to put out an al album in November. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is very exciting. And how is this album, you know, I was reading up on your last EP and everything, and I was reading up on how that last EP was really about your journey from New York to LA and kind of how you were finding yourselves, finding this journey. New York seemed a little bit chaotic, which is understandable, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get to here, <laughs> LA. So with this new album, is there kind of a theme for the whole album or do you feel like each song just has its own individual meaning or thing you're putting out there, message kind of? I feel like it's still, it's a journey to listen yeah. throughout the whole thing and that's kind of the meaning of it like it's it's really about our healing journey mm. you know once getting settled in LA really establishing establishing ourselves as artists but also just the past few years have been super chaotic and yeah. like you know encountering a bunch of life things COVID you know like my dad got sick there was just a lot that you know it was yeah. For me to write about, it was it was focusing on healing. So yeah, it, that that was kind of like I'd say the main concept of the album. 
even though you know it takes you on this wild journey and everyone may like hear or interpret things differently from each song yeah but. no that's really cool and, and i mean i couldn't help but notice so much of your music was put out during the pandemic so obviously i figured that there was going to be a lot involved with that and mm -hmm. i mean did the pandemic i mean it sounds like it did kind of affect the music for it, sure uh, yeah affected what you guys were writing about yeah yeah i mean it's 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 funny because it's like at this point, everyone's like, cool, can we not talk about yeah. the pandemic? Right, but right. It's, it's a part it's of just us, though. What it, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, that really was uh, a huge turning point for us as, like, just people and, mm. and as artists, too. Because it, it uh, we had a chance to, you know, like, try on different outfits, try, try different things, but then also there's this whole other, like, life happening outside of that, which yeah. was, like really challenging, you know, for, yeah. for everybody. So, yeah, a lot of the music was made during that time. And it was kind of like, how do we come out of this? And it was an opportunity to sort of choose who we wanted to be and mm -hmm. how we wanted to handle these things. And that's, you know, also a big, a big part of the music and a part of that, that healing journey that you kind of hear in the album. And that's kind of cool that, because I know you had one song that came out in 2019, right? Wasn't there, I think, just one yeah, song? Yeah, that was sort of like yeah. the beginning of Ill Peach and still really like scratching the surface of like, who are we as a band? Yeah. You know? And so now I feel, especially with this album, like I feel so like in my bones, like, oh, this that. is me as an artist. He feels that way, you know, like, we've we've tr gone on a trek with this like sonic journey where it's like landing in a place that's really cool and interesting and people are like yeah. starting to grasp it and get it and so are we so and even cool. through your music videos too because i was watching some of the music videos too and i love that i think i was watching which one was it was it Comat comatose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was that the one where it was like kind of really chaotic mm -hmm. and it was like mm -hmm. from the point of view of like well i remember there was like you were at the basketball and yeah, stuff yeah. and i mm -hmm. love that you guys can and that was during the pandemic right that song yeah, yeah. Was, yep okay yep. That, was, that was february 2021. Yep. Okay. So we yeah. were definitely in it still. No, 2022. Yeah. And you really got the chaos. I mean, I I got into that. I was like, that's really cool. And I love that people can relate in that way. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like, it's for me that that's what a lot of, the, a lot of these songs sound like and feel like is just like, it sounds like my mind, my brain yes. at that time, which was chaotic. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's hard to listen to it sometimes. You know, just because I'm like, I'm literally going back to that to that yeah. time. You know. Oh, and I bet it's such a visceral experience for you. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's the thing as an artist. I mean, us people that you know just are listening, we hear your music and we feel whatever we feel. But for you guys, it's like you are taken right back to whatever you were feeling, and that must be a lot to absorb all that. You're listening. You're feeling whatever. You're feeling what you feel now, and you're just kind of having to like. Yeah experience all of that mm -hmm. so that's kind of a cool thing that only musicians really or anyone that makes anything creative i mean i guess if you paint a painting right you can look back and be like wow i was feeling something but with music it's different because you're really absorbed in the music mm -hmm. when you listen to it well and it's so funny so cool. because you know like a lot of bands that are putting out music it's like you finish that project or that album or that EP months yeah. in advance before it even reaches the ears of the audience. And so by the time it comes, you know, like by the time November comes out, we've been listening to it for almost two years. So yeah, that's it's, such a weird it's yeah. thing. Yeah. And then after it's out, it's like, it's not ours anymore. Mm -hmm. it, and know? people will interpret it exactly. however you want to interpret it. Yeah. Well, and that's what was really cool, too, because, again, with so much of your music, I feel like I can really connect to, I mean, I don't know exactly what you guys are thinking, but I have at least an idea <laughs> <hope> of, not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that good of an astrologer, but no, I mean, I feel like with your music, though, you really do connect with it. And I really did love also Head Full of Holes, too, 
which I know you guys performed earlier. Yes. So with that one, I was reading about how that song is really, or at least what you were saying about it in the past, was it's assessing how much of the past is real and how much is embellished in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Boom! <laughs> like, what a concept. I mean, it's true, but also, like, I'm just mm -hmm. curious to kind of hear more about that because I agree with that. I think that that's a really interesting thing. And do you feel like, are you talking about with that like very much nostalgia or are you thinking of it's more like focusing on the past so that we're not focusing on maybe what's going on right now that could be difficult? I think it's probably both. It's yeah. probably, this is something I learned in therapy. Yes. Like, you know, a trauma. Therapy, the yes. trauma. The trauma. You are capable of sort of like reprogramming that memory. Yeah. Into, and if you're blocking it, then it's a it's not as bad as it actually was, you know? Mm. But then on the nostalgic side, yeah, it's like you crave and you want to relive those like great memories, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so if, if, if there's a movie or if there's an album that, you know, uh, had an impact on you back then and you listen to it again. It takes you back. Yeah. Like, it takes, like we're obsessed yeah. with reliving that feeling again, you know? Yeah. Which is why we like, there's a cycle of like, oh yeah, let's let's go search for these like vintage right. t-shirts or whatever. We're all you know? about nostalgia and yeah. vintage. And are you guys millennials too? Are you guys what are not to get into every all the ages? What stuff. are we? What I don't even know. know. What year are you born? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> you're like yes. Well, I was just talking about millennials <laughs> for myself. I think that we are millennial. Okay. We are. Yeah. You guys are millennials. Yeah. Okay. Well, because I just feel like the reason why I bring up millennials is because I think. I don't know, maybe every generation has that. But I feel like for us in the 90s, let's just say that, mm -hmm. whoever had a childhood in the 90s of any age, I think that we all connected with the sweetness that was the 90s. Maybe it wasn't sweet for everyone, if you're like yeah. a 30 yeah. year old. Mm -hmm. But yeah. now like I'm, you know, I'm in my 30s and now I'm, I'm like wondering if people are having that experience who are kids now. Like, even know. though it's a different time, but it's true, the nostalgia of it all, our memories, there could be so many difficult things that were actually happening in the 90s, and there were. Right. But for us, we just remember those sweet, like, you know, Barbies, and, you know, we're, and now, you know, with the Barbie movie coming. It's like, we're getting, we get so into it, and I think you're right. I think, at least as a millennial, I feel like a lot of my friends, we all really get into it. Yeah. Because I think we're kind of craving that, certainty and the sweetness that seemed to be of that time at least i don't know if it really was and maybe that's kind of what you guys are talking about it's probably we also the, <laughs> out of fear of the future right. or, or the present or you know it's just like let's go back to because so it it's easier yeah you know the I mean? connection to like what was happening like culturally back there back then also it's, yeah. it's like i think of kids nowadays being like wow like so challenging you're just like on your phone all day and you have social nice. media it's like we we lived through a period of time like yeah. graced the period of time right Without before phones. that happened yes. where yeah it makes you look at life a little differently and yeah the nostalgia of it is really intense you so know? i don't know if kids have that now i mean i don't want to speak for the kids but it's like they do have phones and they do have social yeah. media and they want to get on instagram at like 10 years old and we didn't have that pressure. I think we just got to right. be weird and be kids and get to be like whatever we wanted to be without the pressure of mm -hmm. all these people watching us and like judging us and being like, that's yeah. weird that you're doing that. And I mean, the, just you, the visibility, yeah. The, yeah, the pressure that so comes from pressure. that. Like you used to be able yeah. to also like for music, you know, it used to be cool to be like the cool kid that found something that no one's listening to. Yeah. And now, you know, you're just like, kind of spoon fed it That's where true. you can't go like bin diving for vinyls um, yeah. or whatever and be you like just go oh. on spot <laughs> right yeah which is great it's so nice to have so right. much music as a, at our fingertips but mm -hmm. it does take away a little bit of like the I don't know just the excitement of finding mm -hmm. something or like yeah like you said like your friend making you a mix cd yeah, like, I've never heard this band before. I miss mix CDs. I do. And is there a way to get back to it? I don't know. Like, we are so far in a direction. I don't right. know. But I think there is a group of people that like that. We're making CDs. Yeah. For our album. Oh, you guys we're, are? Yeah, we're single-handedly going to bring back <laughs> the CD industry. One CD, two CDs. Uh, what about cassettes? 
for the people to oh, have I cars love, yeah, with cassettes I love still. Cassettes. I love cassettes. I mean, I love just like the idea of that as yeah. a collection, but. I don't think that people are too far gone in that direction. It's yeah. Like, yeah. like we just got off tour and it was so cool to see like the kids that are out there just mm. craving that yeah. sort of like interaction connection. and connection. Yeah. And, you know, you're just like, yeah, it was refreshing because I feel yeah. like all of us can get very absorbed in the vortex of technology and it's it's like hard to you know, really mm -hmm. feel that from people, so. Well, and I'm sure, like, especially during the pandemic, that was something I was thinking about, too, with your music. Since you did put out a lot of music right in the pandemic, you didn't get to have that experience. Well, I don't know. Did you get to have that experience of, like, mm -mm. performing live? I know you went on tour, and that was, like, this last year, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you were first putting out music, it's like you didn't necessarily get to have that experience that maybe a lot of artists have when they're, first putting up yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. that, that relationship is pretty important. Yeah. Know, making music and performing it. So you not it. having yeah. it separated like that. I mean, it's, 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 it's a great thing too, you know? Yeah. Like that first EP was just like, that was just us, you know, alone in a room That's for a while. cool too, yeah. Yeah. That's different, but different cool. Outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really interesting. I just, it's so cool because I don't think I've really like talked to a band yet that has put most of their music out in the pandemic. I mean, they they were kind of around and then mm -hmm. they put stuff out. So this is a very unique experience and I'm sure there's other bands too, but for you guys, it's just cool that you in one way had this little like isolated time to do your own thing. Yeah. And then later, I guess people started listening and you had shows and and then all the, you know, kind of uh, chaos began after that <laughs> in yeah. terms of touring and everything mm -hmm. and like getting the energy from other people and then right. you're like, like feeling it from other people. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. I think it just like, the, I don't know, the pandemic with everything just kind of like drop the veil of bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, did. like we live in a very like an industry centered city. So it was kind of nice for that noise to go away for a moment and we could just really like lean into just be real. Just be real and just be like, okay, like what do we actually want to make today without like thinking about, oh, I had a session with this person the other day and yeah. this influenced me or you know, this the is FOMO. trending. The, the FOMO. FOMO. Was not right. That's so true. It left. Because you it were left just us. To, with yourself, that's mm -hmm. it, writing the music. And that really is so, it's just such an interesting thing. I really like that you guys, I mean, it seems like you had that experience and now you're out in the world and it seems like people are very receptive to your music. They're really interested in what's going on and with all your new music you're putting out, it's kind of like now you're here and you're ready to like kind of be like, hey, let's let's do this thing. But I'm glad. Let's tango. Let's tango, exactly. Yes. It's a bad joke. That's a bad <laughs> no, joke. tango. Let's face you know. it. Honestly, dad jokes are part of the nostalgia. True. And I think it's what we were talking about. We gotta, we gotta yeah, you're keep. Being nostalgic. <sighs> yeah, we gotta keep that nostalgia alive. But honestly, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm so happy to get to talk to you guys and just Same. get to, yeah, yeah, hear a little bit about your music, hear about your process. Um, so you guys are going on. Let's see. So you did a tour. I know you were in. Um, at the Moroccan Lounge in July, right? That was your last LA show, right? That was supposed to be our last LA oh, show, but okay. then we ended up playing with Fantagram instead. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, we, we were we're the... That's exciting, yeah. okay. But, it was a really exciting opportunity. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of the Bellwether. It's okay, like a brand yeah. new venue. It sounds familiar, I don't know if it I've been there, It just opened, but we, opened. so that okay. show, that was the first show. We were the first band. Oh, so band. you were the yeah. first band to ever, so, you guys in Fantagram. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, it was sweet. Oh my goodness. How was that, playing with Fantagram? Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I mean, yeah. we, yeah. Yeah. when we moved to Brooklyn in 2012, that was like the band. Yeah, I remember that, that too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're like around, I feel like we're around the same age. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, you're like, <laughs> I'll lady, never tell. Lady never tell. We're, we're 90s people. I know yeah, that. We are. Well, and if you're talking about Fantagram in 2012, that was like, I went to CSUN. Like, I, I went here. Oh, okay. And so I remember walking around campus with like 
Fantagram in my little, yeah. um, well, I guess iPods. Uh, yeah. Eyelid I, movies. I'm iPod. actually yeah. 55. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You're like, I'm, I'm just, 64. I have the LA diet. Wow. Right. Yeah. Flawless. <laughs> Flawless. Flawless. No, I love it. That's really <laughs> exciting. So you guys are, so you did that. And then you guys, do you have any more tours coming up? You're doing Pitchfork Festival in London? We're in doing November? that. Yes. It's going to be so awesome. Um, playing with Chai, which we love them. Okay, cool. And then we have a few other shows sprinkled around over there. So it'll be our first time in the UK. Yeah. And oh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. Gonna be London fun. Calling Festival in Ooh. Amsterdam. Oh, okay. Oh, that is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going to do that. And then when are you going to be back in L.A.? Because I want to go. <laughs> well, we're this planning. This is for me. Too. Yeah, just we're you. Planning just a, me. Your show. Your show. We're planning a release show <laughs> oh, cool. at the end of November. Nice. So the details for that will be coming out. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's exciting. Yeah. And you're on all the medias. The, we are all, all, all of them. All of them. The Il Peach. The Il Peach. Instagram. We're on the deep, dark web. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple there. Again, we love it, but also it's like, ugh, Instagram, we love it, we hate it, we need it. Anyways, but I always ask kind of a bonus question. We talked a little bit already about your astrology, which I'm glad you guys are indulging oh, yeah. me in. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Here Let's we get go. into it. I love hearing people's astrology. So we already know you said you're a Libra. Libra. And you're a Sag. Sagittarius. And you even knew your birth time, but I don't have my app pulled up to do your whole like chart. 2 30. A.M. That's impressive. November 28th. Yeah. That's impressive. How do you know this? Because yeah. I asked my mom recently. <laughs> because in L.A., you got to know your birth time. Right. Yeah, I, like, I don't know about in Brooklyn, mom, but I in to L.A. What time was I born? <laughs> People keep asking me my birth time. Yeah. I don't know. Is New York as much astrology centric or is it mostly L.A.? I feel like L.A. I, it's is probably. I, I don't know. I don't think I don't so. I okay. Not New York. New York is not, not, very not the aggro folks that we were hanging just with. across the board. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, LA, we have a very spiritual community, yeah. and I think astrology kind of like falls in that boat right yeah. there. So totally. We're all, we're all very into it. But okay, I so like Libra, it. Sag, do you guys know anything about those signs? Or? Zero clue. I mean, I just know. You said you're a triple Libra. I'm a triple Libra. Dang. So, all about balance. All, it's the ultimate balance. What is, what balance. is triple? Sun, moon, and rising. Okay. Yeah. So how do I know if I'm double? We gotta get triple. your charts. Gotta get your charts, son. Uh, if we had more time, okay. I would do the whole thing, but we just don't. I don't think we have time unless people want to watch like a 50-minute video. <laughs> but <laughs> are you guys down? <laughs> no. Matt's like, no. <laughs> All right, guys. 73 minutes. Oh my oh. God, right. He's like, okay, you're going to no. retire. No, I don't think it's 73 minutes. Oh but it's okay. God. He can use this as bonus footage anyways. But I'll, I'll look at your chart another time. But in terms of being a triple Libra, so yeah, it's sun, moon, and rising. The sun is your like basic sense of self. The moon is your moods and emotion. And then the rising is your flash for the world or like the front door, like this is how someone I think I'm a lot of flash. You're a lot of flash. flash. Probably, Probably fire not. because you're Sag. So you do have yeah. fire in your chart. Yeah, I got that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. No, definitely Sages are like very fiery. They're very fun. They're very like enthusiastic, bombastic. They're like, like control. <laughs> well, like really sensitive too at the same time. That's like, not Sag, that. but I wonder, I think you might have some other stuff in your chart. Oh. Yeah, I'm a blend. I'm a hybrid. You're a hybrid. I got, I got a triple. Yeah. In well, there. everyone has a triple. I mean, everyone oh, has a, cool. well, not, I mean, everyone has a sun, moon, and rising is what I mean. Oh, but hers you. just happens to be Libra across the board. Okay. So. Hey, yeah. Yeah. But Sages are like a lot of fun. Um, they are very much into adventure and traveling and culture and all those things. <gasps> what? Yeah. All Thank those you. things. Thank yes. you. Yes. Wow. It's like you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's what and then saying. the Libra person's trying to find the balance within all of it. Yes. Sometimes Sages can be a little all over the place, so then you have to like too real. maybe like bring it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, we'll have to get into the a chaos. deeper dive yeah. another time. But thank you for indulging me a little bit thank into you. astrology, and thanks so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us. So fun. Yay! And and this this was your first time, you said. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. now you've been here. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. KCSN, the SoCal Sun. Hell yeah. Yay. Thank well, thanks you. so much for watching. And, you know, we'll hope to have Ill Peach here again another time. Sick. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>